If you've got a high ball fire, then this is definitely going to be the video for you because I'm going to be explaining a why you have a high ball flight and b how you can fix that high ball flight so stay tuned to today's tip because we're going to be talking all things height spin shaft lean angles of attack you name it we've got it a high ball flight can come from many different variables in the golf swing it could come from a, a poor swing path it could co come from a poor angle of attack so that's the club working down towards the golf ball sometimes it can be too steep other times you can be too shallow and hit the golf ball a bit too high and by doing that you've kind of used a lot of your hands to almost kind of help the ball up into the air and I, I do it like this because a lot of golfers actually do try and help the ball up into the air rather than using technique and strike to do so so if you're one of those players that feels like they help the golf ball in the air like i said this is definitely going to be the tip for you because we're going to be talking about we're going to start actually with the most important part of every single golf swing it's the impact position okay one of the key things that we always look at a lot of people mention about the lower body rotating towards the target the weight being on the left or the the front foot but one piece one thing people don't always think about is the actual angle of the shaft and the club face at impact so one of the common faults that i see is that someone could actually come into the golf ball and have lots of rotation but if we get into this position at impact notice how the shaft of the club is going up my tray or leg now the, sh the angle of that club now it's actually an eight it's an eight iron club and it's pretty much got the full eight to nine iron loft on it but with my with my angle of attack and with my speed that's what creates backspin the loft on the club also creates backspin so now i'm getting a really high ball flight the players that hit the golf ball the furthest and the most consistent are those with a little bit more shaft lean to impact. So I'm almost trying to turn this eight iron into a seven iron. And then using the speed of my golf swing and the angle of attack of my golf swing, that's what elevates the golf ball. Guys, if you are new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. It does make a massive, massive difference. So just pop down there, click subscribe, and you will not miss any more future content golf tips course vlogs matches collaborations club reviews some massive club reviews coming towards the back end of the year as well so please do hit that subscribe button and do not miss out so the million dollar question now is how do we get into that impact position how do i get the shaft leaning towards the target and it's a great question it's a it's actually probably one of the most difficult things to do in the golf swing because everything is happening at impact which as you probably are aware is the fastest part of the golf swing and it's also where your subconscious takes over there's no one that can really guarantee that they're in the right position at impact and they can't you can't really feel it at that exact point you need to use video analysis to kind of come back and see what point you were at so one of the tips i'm going to give you is understanding first of all what impact is so if i take my setup ball position in the middle of my stance and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my lead hip towards where the target would be I'm going to put my lead hip over my lead foot and I'm going to put my grip my hands on the inside of my lead leg okay so now you can kind of see that my lower body is working round and towards the target with the body weight towards the left hand side I've still got a bit of pressure up the inside of my trail foot but the majority of it is on my left side now Again, in the past, you'll have always heard, oh, it's like 90-10% on your left, on your on your lead side, or 80-20. To be honest, I think it's more like 60-40. It's not a huge amount because we're not trying to laterally move across. We're just using a little bit of pressure, so more downward pressure into the ground, and that downward pressure adds into some rotation as well. Now, where should the upper body be during this position? So as I take my setup again, lead hip is going over my lead foot. Hands are going towards the inside of my thigh. My weight is slightly on my left side. My right, my trail leg is just rolled in a little bit. So you can kind of feel like the ankle is just kind of rolling in towards the ground, the touch. So you've got a solid lower body looking position there. Now my upper body position, you'll notice that my spine angle is still very much over the golf ball as is my head okay so i haven't tried to move forwards here so i'm not trying to move my upper body towards the, the lead side because i'm not trying to do this i'm actually trying to keep my head if anything over the golf ball or even a smidgen behind the golf ball one of the really good drills with this is actually you could take your setup start in start in that position pause and then just start your golf swing from here 
And the idea is that you're able to then try and get back into that position. Now, one of the key things with height is you're trying to watch the initial ball flight. It's not always about how high the actual ball goes, it's how it gets there. So for example, if I hit the ball 100 feet in the air and somebody else hits the ball 100 feet in the air, but my initial launch, my initial trajectory as the ball starts off is lower, then it's more of a powerful ball flight. If you get to 100 feet faster, then the ball will not travel as far. And that's a key thing as well. Height is important as long as it gets there in the right way. Right, so that's drill number one. Very simple, just making sure that we've got the lower body into position. Drill number two is a lot more difficult, okay? And it very much comes down to the lead wrist and the position we want to try and get that lead wrist in at impact. For those that kind of shallow the club out, or I should say release early, notice how my lead wrist gets cut, okay? Notice how my wrist angle gets more into that position as I'm coming into the golf ball, okay? So if I release it early, we're in there. And that's where we don't want to be because that's now adding loft onto the golf ball. And it's very much that kind of helping the ball in the air. I hate that terminology, but so many golfers do it. And I hear it so often when I'm doing my coaching. We want the body to be in a better position here. So straight away, that's the, that's the key. See my, see my lead wrist, how straight it is? If anything, my, my wrist is almost kind of pushed out in this direction. So it's almost like a, an ex, a slightly less exaggerated than a Dustin Johnson bowed position, okay? So what I want you to try and do, I want you to get to the top of the backswing, you're gonna pause at the top, and as you get there, you'll notice that my lead wrist, my glove hand has got the, the relationship between knuckles and forearm is dead straight. And as I come back down, that's the key I want to try and maintain. I want to try and maintain a straight angle there because when I do so, the club head stays behind my hands, okay? So if I'm able to maintain that position, my hands are forward. If I release that position to a more of a cupped position, you'll notice that there's more of an angle and now the club head is in front of my hands, okay? So this is a really, really tough one to feel because you've got to feel it at the top and then you've got to be able to figure out how to feel it on the way down. Now, that feel for me would almost be turning my the badge of my glove, in this case, it's a tightless glove, turning the badge of my glove down into the ground, okay? Now, what I'm gonna fully expect to see with this is a real low left shot, okay? What I'm doing is improving my hands relative to golf ball and club face at impact but i'm probably closing the face as well but again it's just a bit of a practice drill so if i get to the top here i'm going to almost kind of rev my hands under okay hands go forward so there and the, the initial ball flight then was super low all right so we try that again get that super low ball flight to start with this is an eight iron remember so it will have it has got loft on it so you get to the top of the backswing, left wrist is nice and straight. As I come back down, I'm almost gonna try and motorbike rev my glove hand, okay? So get to the top, rev the glove hand, there we go. Really low ball flight and I pulled it left, just as I said. But what you're starting to feel now is that position. We're really exaggerating. I've got a slightly closed face, but I'm really exaggerating the hands going forward. So I'm now able to hit the golf ball lower, literally after a few shots. How you bed that into your golf swing obviously takes a, a little bit more time as it naturally would do and should do because it's not that easy, is it? Okay, so if I take my setup again, drill number one, lower body pointing to the target, hands forward and try and come back to that position. Drill number two, just pause at the top of the backswing, check that lead wrist position. Then on the way down, we need to rev it so it comes down in there. Notice how the club face is pointing to the ground. And as you stop into impact position, notice how the hands are way forwards of the club head. And it almost, well, not almost, definitely way too much. But again, it's an exaggerated, exaggerated position to improve the overall. And then as we hit the actual shot, we're able to get a little bit more of a lower starting angle up to a nice high trajectory. I hope this video has helped. It's always a very tricky one trying to improve your ball flight, trying to lower your ball flight in particular, but two really good drills that I use a lot with a lot of my online lesson clients. If you are interested in coming 
on board. I have space for you. So if you want to go on the Skillist app, follow me on there and you don't even need to buy a lesson to start with. You can follow me, chat to me. We can kind of figure out maybe a plan worth moving forward. And if you want to get a lesson, then I'm always available. Guys, thank you very much for watching. As I said at the start of the video, please do hit that subscribe button. It does make a massive, massive difference to the channel. And for today, from a glorious southwest of England, it's seven o'clock in the morning, hence the long shadows. It's beautiful. Today's going to be a good day. Enjoy.